So I'm just going to talk about the facts of what happened at the Blue Ridge Rock Festival in 2023 in Alton, Virginia. Um, these are facts. These are not my opinions. These are true facts. I'm going to try to not be emotional when talking about this stuff because it, um, from an emotional standpoint, was very frustrating. But uh, I'm just going to st state pure facts to you. So here we go. This is exactly what happened. Um, Wednesday night, uh, I believe uh, a lot of campers arrived. Um, I have a close friend that was a camper arrived. Um, they had um, overbooked the amount of camping spots that the people were promised. The reason this happened, I don't know, but what happened because of it was the amount of time that people had to wait to try to get to their camp spot. In fact, forcing some of the people to not be able to actually get to where they needed to camp, having to park very far away, uh, upwards to a mile, mile and a half away, carrying their camping gear to where they needed to be as well. I had a friend, got there at 9.30 that night, on Wednesday night, the, the 6th. He got settled Nine hours later, so after driving all the way from a very far away from Alabama uh, to there, uh, had to wait nine hours to get stuff in. So he finally got settled at 6.30 in the morning. Uh, that was Thursday morning, uh, the very first official day of the festival. Um, first day of the festival happened. Uh, there were a lot of bands that played during the day. Uh, I and me and my friends had gotten there um, we pulled up around 2.30 on Thursday, uh, two days prior to this, by the way, uh, which we weren't told when we first got the, uh, tickets that you had to buy shuttle pass. Uh, there was no parking at the venue, which we thought was very odd, um, uh, but we were required each, uh, to buy a shuttle pass for the four days, uh, totaling out to $54 per person. Uh, so you couldn't like carpool because normally when you pay for a parking lot, um, they call, called it free parking, but you had to pay for the shuttle. So it really wasn't free parking. Uh, and this shuttle system was, whew, it was rough. The, uh, the shuttle system, um, was a bunch of school buses bought, um, I'm, believe by uh the festival uh people they were like the old school 90s school buses uh no air conditioning and that stuff which you know okay it's a shuttle it's not that big a deal uh the problem was the lack of professionalism um when you're paid all this money for a shuttle they did not have enough drivers um there were several buses parked in the parking lot um not being driven they were just sitting there. Um, we had an hour and a half wait uh, the very first day. This was day one on Thursday uh, to get to the shuttle. So, so uh, we parked, uh, we walked, and then uh, it was a long walk. Um, but okay, whatever, you figure that out. Um, it's part of festivals. Um, but the wait uh, to get there was about an hour and a half from the time we were standing in line. So we didn't get into uh, the Blue Ridge till about 4.30, 5 o'clock. 4.30, I would say. I have to, I've done the exact time. I'm getting them. Stating facts here. Um, we get in. Um, as, we're pull, as we're walking up, um, you know, there's only one way in to this festival and one way out. It's the same road. It's literally just one road. Uh, of you going in and going out. Um, as we walk up, um, you can smell, uh, it was a pretty bad smell of um, the porta potties. And I thought, okay, well, that's just part of it, whatever. I didn't know all the other things that I've seen about uh, the porta potties being completely overfilled, not being taken care of. Uh, because before we got there, there were a lot of other people that were already there. Uh, we get there, uh, we watch. Uh, the last three songs of a band, Exodus, that we wanted to see. Uh, we wanted to see them for their full set, but of course, us having to wait, we didn't make it in time. Uh, then we proceed to go buy some merchandise. 
uh, because we were like, well, we want to get a merchandise, to, you know, get a t-shirt for the festival. Uh, got a t-shirt. We kind of walked around to get a lay of the land. As we're walking, um, I'm noticing the massive amounts of trash that are just piled up. Like they've got the trash cans, uh, but the trash cans were so full um, and then they were just overflowing there and it got to the point where people were just throwing their trash beside the trash can so there was this was not just one trash can there were several of these around um, to um, you know uh, just it was just bad the uh, I'm sorry that's my opinion uh, those the facts were that the trash was out on the thing um, we kind of walked around, watched um, another band. Um, they were decent. And then um, it started, kind of starts raining. Uh, we were prepared for rain. We knew that there may be a chance for rain. So we had brought ponchos. Um, so we really weren't worried about the rain. The issue was the storm uh, coming. The storm that had come uh, really literally just built on top of the festival, which was crazy. If you'd have like, watched it on a radar, which is what we did, you could kind of see it literally building on top of just uh, the Blue Ridge Rock Festival. Um, when this happened, um, it was um, pure chaos. They put a sign up on the thing that said, Seek Shelter. Now, the shuttle, just keep in mind, the shuttle where we parked, or where our car was parked, we had to get on the shuttle. The shuttle was about eight and a half, nine miles away from the venue itself. Um, and then to go further on that, there were only two parking lots for this entire festival of, you know, 70,000 people, um, which is crazy. But um, the simple fact remains that we couldn't go anywhere. We were in the middle of a field. There were trees. There were tents that had metal poles. Um, and it said, seek shelter. Um, now, I'll be, you know, uh, completely transparent. Um, you know, we didn't know what to do. We didn't like, well, where are we going to go? There's really nowhere to go. Um, and so what had happened was... The storm came. Uh, we were very fortunate. Uh, <laughs> the one of the tents um, that was there was a medical tent. Um, needed help uh, in the tent, basically helping it from blowing away. Now, I am um, I'm in the event world. I do the events a lot. Uh, I am not in the large event world. I do a lot of smaller private events. Uh, so I understand logistics, and you have to think through everything when you're running a festival, uh, especially at this magnitude. You have to literally think of the worst-case scenario, prepare for it, and hope for the best. Uh, they did not think through any sort of emergency. Now, there was weather. There was lightning. There was hail. A lot of people were still out there. We were in the tent, literally holding the tent down, uh, because the wind was going to carry it away. Now, um, when you put a tent up, um, and you don't have to be in the event world to know this, um, there's usually a ratchet strap um, down, tying down, holding the the tent down. Of course, they're knocked in the you know the poles are knocked into the ground, but there's also a 55 gallon water barrel drum that the things go to. None of that was on this tent, and it was a big tent. I would imagine, um, let's see, about 30 feet, no, maybe 40 feet by about 20 foot. He has a 40 foot by 20 foot tent. Um, and we're like holding on to this in the middle of a lightning storm, trying to make sure this tent doesn't blow away. There's about 40 of us holding the tent down. So, uh, that happened. Uh, it was, you know, scary. You're holding a metal rod in the middle of a lightning storm. Not really the safest thing to do. We were right by a tree. Uh, thankfully, lightning did not strike our uh, tent. Um, but then at the end, afterwards, uh, they had canceled it for the rest of the evening. So um, at about 7.30, um, they had canceled everything for the evening. Uh, said it was not going to happen. We had to evacuate. Um, and, um, you know, we remembered the line that we had to wait in getting on the shuttle. 
And we were like, well, there's a lot more people here going to be getting onto the shuttle to go back. Um, and so we proceeded to wait in line for four and a half hours after that point um, to get on the shuttle to leave. So um, as we were going in to, by the way, let me backtrack, uh, there was no one checking bags um, at all. You could have just had whatever you wanted on you. It would, it didn't matter. Uh, people were just walking in, um, you know, which I thought was like, well, why are they not checking bags? Um, they weren't checking shuttle passes, none of that stuff. Um, the, only, the only check they had was the wristband um, that had the little scanner. It had a little thing on it, and you basically just scanned um, the RFID thing on it to verify that you actually could go in and you bought a ticket. That was the only check that we had. So um, this proceeds to happen. Um, we didn't get back to our place where we were staying um, till about 1 a.m. Um, and then we decided to try to go the next day. Uh, we were frustrated. We were like, you know what? We're going to give another chance. We'll see what happens. Uh, weather looks pretty good for Friday. Um, didn't look bad at all. Um, we wanted to see a lot of the headliners uh, that night. They weren't really, really going on until like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And we're like, you know what? We're just going to get there around 3, 3.30. Kind of just hang out. Maybe see a few bands before that. But we were really just there for the headliners at the end of the evening. We get there at 3.30. Um, the, when I tell you, uh, <laughs> when I tell you there were just so many people, um, it was absolutely insane. Um, it took us a while just to even get into the parking lot. The way it was set up uh, where the buses were being put up, whatever, um, the, um, the fact remains the bus could not make it in because of the amount of mass amount of cars so you know we waited out just just to pull into the parking lot was about 15 minutes while i'm looking behind there's buses behind us and they cannot get in because of again the the lack of preparation and planning and not thinking through any of this so i say all that to say um there was a very 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 long line um, we had, uh, dr driven in and we were just driving, trying to find a place to park. And we all just looked at each other. It was like, there, no, no amount of bands or whatever is worth waiting in this line. Um, from the point of where we were at at the beginning. So on Thursday, it took us an hour and a half. That spot in the line that took an hour and a half to get to the shuttle um, the, the line was about, I mean, we didn't even get to see the end of the line and I'm not exaggerating at least eight or nine times the size of the line that was where we were at to the end. We didn't get to see the end because we were just like, we're not going to do this. Um, so that, uh, was Friday. Uh, they still had the festival Friday. Um, if you could get in a lot of the people that had waited in those long lines in the shuttle, um, we're told that uh, the shuttles weren't running anymore because of weather. Well, um, about 45 minutes later, they decided to resume the shuttles, but a lot, of the, a lot of people had left at that point because they were like, you know what, we're not going to stick around because these are not running the shuttles. They're not letting anybody in. Um, and then, of course, Saturday happened. Um, they canceled the event uh, on Saturday morning for the rest of the weekend. We had made the decision to leave uh, Saturday morning because it just wasn't worth all of this. Uh, we had actually left Friday uh, to go hang out at a local brewery. We were talking to some other people there uh, from the festival. They were doing the same boat. Um, and it was um, my first ever uh, really big, big rock festival to go to. I've been to festivals before, but never like a metal uh, festival. So I was excited, um, but obviously that didn't happen. So there are many, many stories uh, that I've been reading uh, from a lot of different people. Um, and basically what it boils down to um, is this. Um, the weather was bad on Thursday. 
That is a fact. It was bad on Thursday. It wasn't bad for the rest of the evening, but um, being in the event world, AV world, I understand if lightning hit things, all sorts of stuff, they're not sure if it's safe for the people to perform and all that stuff. So I understand canceling Thursday night because of weather. I completely understand that. Your lack of um, planning, however, sh people shouldn't have had to wait five hours, four and a half, five hours to get into a, um, a, a, a shuttle to go home. So um, that's where they really failed. Uh, they failed on a lot of other stuff too. Uh, for other stories I'm hearing, um, there's no water for the stagehands. Um, and really the main thing that's um, being trying to be hid from what I can tell um, reading all these stories is the fact that the stagehands went on strike um, and were not going to finish out the rest of the festival. They, um, they were having very poor working conditions, um, you know, not enough showers, not enough, the porta parties weren't being, you know, emptied. Um, they basically said, look, we need basic living conditions to do this. Um, if you're not in the event world um, and you've never like done that type of work, um, it's very demanding, very, 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 very demanding. And shout out to all the stagehands that were at the festival. Um, I can't even imagine what you guys went through um, because I know working, I've worked, I've worked to a festivals. Um, I've been stagehand in festivals before, the Hangout Fest. I don't know if you've ever heard of that one. Um, but, um, the working conditions, um, are usually not good just in general, uh, for these festivals, uh, cause there's a lot going on. Uh, but you know, as a stagehand, you kind of just say, okay, I'm just going to roll with the punches. Uh, but there comes a certain point where it's like, you know what, where I, I got to have this basic living things to, to make this work to function. Uh, cause it's, it's a lot of heavy work. You're lifting things, you're out in the sun, you're being drained of energy. I mean, you know, there's no drinking beer, none of that stuff. You're, you're constantly trying to stay hydrated. You're drinking water. Um, and it's a lot of work. It is a lot, a lot of work. So, uh, the reason the festival got canceled was not to weather. Weather, uh, they are trying to use weather so they don't have to refund everybody all this money. Uh, the real reason was the fact that the stagehands quit. They struck and they said um, by, they needed these things by 5 p.m. on Saturday and they weren't delivered by 5 p.m. on Saturday. So that's why the rest of the festival was canceled. Um, shout out to all the artists. Um, I know Papa Roach, Oliver Anthony. Um, there was, uh, I think... Uh, there was one, a couple of other artists that had stayed around um, and, and, and done some stuff for the people that were there, uh, especially when they're trying to leave, like more of an acoustic set. And there were other bands that tried to actually perform at different venues and kind of do all this pop-up stuff. But of course, you know, a, a lot of these people came from very, very far away. Uh, I met someone in line from New Zealand. Uh, that had come to the festival um, um, to hear these bands because uh, a lot of these bands don't go out towards New Zealand or that part of the world. And, um, you know, they were very, very disappointed. Um, I'm very grateful. Uh, shout out to all the people that were actually there at the festival, the fans. Um, all of these conditions, all of this stuff, um, shout out to you for not losing your cool. Because uh, that could have very easily happened. Um, uh, being uh, in a, a very, very uh, confined area with a lot of, lot of people for a very, very long time uh, can create mental stress on a lot of people. Uh, so I'm very grateful that no one, there was no like crazy shooting or anything like that. I'm so happy for that um, or grateful for that. And honestly, I was just, we were just grateful to get out, uh, Thursday night to get out and like get to our place and just, you know, decompress. So, uh, that's really what happened, um, at the festival from my experience. Um, and then, like I said, there's a bunch of other stories. Um, I've seen so many stories of just, just pure craziness. Um, and I know, um, overall, um, I had, uh, we were very fortunate. Uh, the people I went with have been to many festivals, Rockville, Louder Than Life, all that stuff. 
and um, they uh, said that this was the worst one they have ever been to. A lot of the other ones are very much more organized. Um, so yeah, um, I'm just, uh, I don't publicly go on and talk about a lot of this stuff, um, but I feel like it needs to be heard. I feel like people's stories need to be heard about this. Um, and yeah, there are a lot of other things in the world that can go wrong. You know, this is, a, in my opinion, a first world problem, but really the concern is the safety part of this. They were not prepared, uh, in any shape, form, or fashion for any sort of real emergency. If a real, real emergency would have happened where people would have had to evacuate immediately, there was a fire, there was all sorts of stuff. There was not any infrastructure in place for that. Uh, Virginia International Raceway, you can go look it up on Google Maps. Uh, there's literally just one way in and one way out. And there's a bunch of woods out. So anyway, um, that's my experience from Blue Ridge Rock Festival. Um, we're going to see what happens and what unfolds. Uh, maybe this will get on the news stories. I'm sure, I've, actually, I've seen some news stories already being produced of this, especially local uh, to there in Alton, Virginia, um, and the surrounding cities, Danville, Durham, all that stuff. So, um, yep, um, that's my experience.